Good morning, everyone. Time to load up the car and drive over to the port. We got uh, got a lot to do in a little bit of time, but uh, I'm excited. We're going fishing. interesting thing about living in Japan is I'm never really scared to eat anything I bought from a convenience store, which is kind of hilarious, you, you know, like in the States I'm sure all of that food is fine, but there's like a stigma against it. Here everything just always seems perfect, like perfectly fresh, like a sandwich from a convenience store is better than any sandwich I can make myself, which is pretty freaking wild. It's a, it's a different thing like I always get these little rice balls and I, I have no problem just stopping for lunch or having a bunch of things from a convenience store whereas stateside I would never do that at all. Let's 
gotta go though. all these vertical stripes on the yellow fin. Big guys, you only see that in their back half from the let this guy go. Those vertical stripes all the way down, close together, it's like a dead giveaway for the juvenile yellow fins. When they get bigger yellow fins, their back fins will get really long and yellow. And so it's a dead giveaway, but the small ones sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. So that's something tiny, he this giant popper I was throwing off the front. Check this out. Oh, I don't have a very good camera angle. Look at the size of that popper that this kid just ate. That's wicked. These skipjacks are digging this popper. Normally, don't catch anything small on this thing. They're liking it. I think it's this overcast that we got. Really gives a good presentation for top waters. Yeah. Ah, oh, this one's the elephant. On to Papa. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Oh, hungry little bastard. Yeah, man. I think this this overcast is kind of feeding on top. I think that was actually the first skeleton I've caught on a popper, like ever. I've caught a lot on like X traps and like diving plugs. Yeah, don't think don't think I've ever caught one on a popper before. It's this Yozuri. Can't remember what size it is, but it's like that green and blue and it kind of changes colors when you look at it. Switched over to a new spot. Got that outer water buoy over there. And we're hooked up. Got some fish, got a little baby monkey on over here. Something else going on. Oh man, oh man, look at that beauty. I'm gonna get in on the action. This rough water, I feel like I can get a beat this. Big monkey, big monkey. Oh, he's looking at. Come on. Oh shit, you're in a pot. Ran out of room. Oh, what's that? Look at that one. Big monkey. Big ass blue fish. Yeah. Get it, get it, get it. There we go. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh man! <laughs> Big old mahi! <laughs> Crushed the popper! Woo! Man, that was cool! Woo! Oh, it came off right there! Spit it out! Mahi Mahi will jump around a lot. So he was jumping, freaking out, losing his mind out there, and this big heavy lure in his mouth, just shaking all around. It makes a bigger and bigger hole where the hook is in. So, I think that hook just ripped out with all that commotion. Well, hopefully we get in a shot in another one.
Within our drift setup, we can still pitch bait to them, still pitch out to them. Marlin are known to eat dead stuff, just like sailfish and other billfish. in the room I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean these guys up and then we're gonna cook them up and make some sushi and make some type of meal out of these guys so I got one skipjack and one yellowfin we'll see what the difference looks like and the difference in the meat quality and we'll see the difference in taste test Let's start off with the yellowfin now this is one that I had used for bait as you can see by the nose being torn there so this one didn't get directly on ice right away so we'll see how that affects the meat quality, how it looks typically, because I'll, I'll eat these yellow fins fairly regularly. First cut, just behind the pec fin all the way up towards the head. And then I'm just gonna start my standard outline, just the tip of my knife. I'm gonna work that back towards the tail. Just start that outline. Try and avoid the belly, bring it all the way down here to the anal fin and then continue my outline just back to here Then I'm just gonna find that backbone with my knife pressing firmly but not smashing anything and I'm gonna run my knife I feel that backbone and I just keep working it working it working it all the way back up to that original head cut same thing on the bottom half I'm gonna find that backbone with the knife it's really a feel thing more than anything work my way all the way up we're just going to finish her off. Should separate right off. Beautiful. Nice. And so you see this line right here. Make this cut. And that's going to separate my bloodline, which holds a bunch of bones. And that darker stuff, as you can see now that I made the cut, that holds a lot more fishy taste, kind of like a strong flavor that's not what we're going to want in our recipe and also not what you're going to want if you're uh, not eating the fish fresh. That will lead to a very fishy taste. We got the bloodline removed. I'm just going to take the skin off. So just start here, get my knife flat and slowly work your way down. Try and follow that. It's okay if you leave a little meat with the skin because tunas have really thin skin. Just keep working your way down. Bam, there you go, got your tuna loin. What the skipjack look like should be pretty much the same thing. Make that initial cut behind the pack fin, back up towards the head. Take my knife and we're just gonna do that exact same thing we did with the yellow fin, just kind of start that outline. Well, skin's a little bit thicker on the skipjack, for sure. Just work our way down. Start at the pack fin, you can kind of feel how soft it is where the belly is and you just don't, once that nastiness from the guts touches your meat it can honestly kind of taint the flavor so you try and avoid that back towards the anal fin and then continue that outline exactly like with the yellow fin just find that backbone work my way all the way back yeah it feels fairly similar this skipjack's honestly a little bit firmer than the elephant was i think that's just because i got it on ice immediately vice the yellow fin we messed around with that guy that cut there and everything should just kind of come apart now beauty 
Yeah, so you can kind of see how much darker the skipjack is, vice the yellow fin. So definitely lose a little bit more meat with that bigger bloodline. Looks all right though. First off guys, cheers, wherever you are in the world. I know there's some crazy stuff going on, but just know that uh, we're living a life out here in Japan, that's for sure. A Little bit of mayo, a little bit of sriracha, and some lemon juice, and we're just gonna kinda mix that together. We're gonna see what it tastes like, cause I've never made this before. I'm just gonna do it to taste, really. All right, so we got our rice and everything there. Now, we're going to add a nice line of this spicy tuna. I don't know how, sp uh, it's not as, not as spicy as I think Taylor's gonna want, but I think it's gonna be the perfect concoction. Beautiful avocado. That's just to make it green. Oh, everyone knows avocado doesn't taste like anything. All right, now let's try and roll this some bitch. There you go here. Start like that. Is that how you do it? Or do you try and roll the whole thing? It's probably you're probably supposed to have it all the way close. I bet that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, have you ever worked at a burrito place? I've literally never worked at any type of burrito place. I worked at a pizza place, but I didn't make the pizza. No, let's bring it back. Let's try it again. We're gonna try and get it all in there. Oh yeah, that's probably what it's supposed to look like. You're probably supposed to like get it all tight and shit like that. And you're supposed to keep going. No one likes loose sushi. Nope, only tight sushi. See, we got our sushi squirting out the ends. Oh man. Well, you know, it may not be aesthetic, but this is definitely gonna taste good. All right, and then I think you're supposed to cut it with the saran wrap on, and that's the whole point of the saran wrap, I think. This is not tight at all. How do people do it super tight? Cut it in the middle, because obviously at the outside, that's gonna be a lot harder to cut, so we'll just do it. Like that. I don't know, dude, that kind of looks like a sushi roll to me. You think that's, uh, I think that's edible. I think that'll work. Yeah, you guys may not like it, but uh, this is what peak performance looks like. That is the ideal sushi roll. <laughs> Come in. Hey, hey man. We're filming a YouTube video. <laughs> what do you think, dude? Mm. Very, very good. Yeah? Have that's you ever eaten raw fish before? I've had sushi before. Okay. Then you've had raw fish before. Nice. Not as spicy as I wanted it though, but we're getting no? there. Okay, well we can make it more spicy. We'll just dump the whole freaking bottle in there. <laughs> we're coming at you with round two here in a second. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get all of my ingredientes on the closer side of the roll. We're also going more tuna on this side. If avocados were like three feet long, they would be perfect. Oh, then they could be the eggplant emoji. Even like foot, yeah, imagine if they were the eggplant emoji. <laughs> but everyone likes avocado though. Dude. No. Oh. oh man, that's a whole lot of sushi, bro. Oh crap. Get back in there. <laughs> All right, we got a bunch of stuff coming out from that end. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it means it's definitely tight. Boom. Let's try this on for size. Oh, probably shouldn't cut it on the mat, huh? Uh, Is that a bad idea? Yeah. It was like a dollar. Living one of the perks of living in Japan is they have stuff like that at every convenience store. Oh dude, these are actually starting to look good. I'd take them <laughs> off the sushi go around. You take to eat it at the sushi go around? Yeah, yeah well I'll you know pay, what? I'll pay top dollar plate. <laughs> I I I'd pay the dollar fifty versus the one dollars so that we normally pay. Uh, I guess that's what they're supposed to look like, right? You know, fun fact: I didn't fish to my whole life. Didn't really like sushi until like the last year or so. Like, I think it was the seaweed. Um, it's 
It's like that dude in Zombieland. He's like, which ones is the coconut? Snowballs. Snowballs. I hate snowballs. It's not the flavor. It's the consistency. I hate snow. It's not the flavor. It's the consistency. But now I kind of got that acquired taste for it, if you will. Chop all that nastiness off. Oh man. Nah, dude. I think this one's gonna be a lot better. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to taste test this, guys. We're gonna have to do some researching. Report back. Did you guys notice the difference between the elephant and the skipjack? Because so that was the first roll was the elephant, second roll was skipjack. You, you guys tell at all? Uh, <laughs> no. I thought uh, the, all the flavors came together to make an awesome family of flavor. Awesome yeah, family of flavor. Nice yeah, family of flavor. <laughs> but uh, if you rolled it just the rice and the fish, you could probably tell a little bit. All right, guys. That's gonna be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. We got a whole lot more sushi to make and a whole lot more sushi to eat. So. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Later. Q outro music. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow that stuff for you.